welcome again to Cobwebs, everyone. My name is Daniel, and today I've got a new stack of Blu-rays to talk to you about. My watch list over the past month, March 2024. Nine movies, but eight slots, because I'm going to be ranking one box set just as one. And everything here is a recommendation, one to one degree or another, good. I didn't watch anything bad over the past month, but I did watch a few things that are truly great. But let's kick off with my least favorite, and that is Of Unknown Origin. This is a Scream Factory release of a 1983 horror movie. I guess you'd call it a horror movie because you can't really fit it into anything else, but it's starring Peter Weller as an 80s yuppie who's trying really hard to work his way up at this big company, get big raise, big promotion. His wife and kid uh, leave the house for a week to go visit grandpa while he stays home and works on a really big project for work. But while he's working, he realizes that there's a giant rat in the house that he now has to deal with. So the movie essentially is watching Peter Weller versus a rat in the house that you mostly barely see. You do get a glimpse of it here or there. And it randomly changes sizes throughout the movie. Sometimes it seems to be this giant monster. Sometimes it seems to be a tiny little normal rat that can crawl down the toilet. I didn't love this movie. I thought it was you know, good, certainly competent. I really liked Peter Weller in the lead role. It's directed by, oh gosh, what is that guy's name? Panos... Panos Cosmatos' dad, George P. Cosmatos, that's right. He directed a lot of stuff for Stallone, sort of. It seems like Stallone hired him so he could really direct. He directed Tombstone, which it seems like Kurt Russell hired him so, so Kurt Russell could really direct. So I don't know how much of a director he really was. I watched this on a day when... I don't know, I'd had a long day at work and I wasn't really in the mood to watch a guy be really stressed out at work and then be really stressed out about a really annoying thing in his house. I didn't enjoy it a whole lot, but if you want to watch just Peter Weller be great in a movie and go insane trying to fight a rap, then this is your movie. By the way, this is a, a Screen Factory Blu-ray non-collector's edition and it was one of the poorer looking Blu-rays I feel like I've ever seen. If you're a big fan of this movie, I'm guessing you're very much anticipating a 4K, maybe one of these days. Next up, I've got David Cronenberg's Crime... Crimes of the Future at number seven. Um, last month, Horror Pack, which is a monthly subscription service that uh, Blu-ray, horror Blu-ray subscription service sent me their March box uh, to show and review on the channel. And that was very nice of them. And one of the Blu-rays I got was Crimes of the Future. This is the only one that I've watched so far. David Cronenberg's most recent movie. And, you know... This movie didn't totally work for me. I'm ranking it over of known origin because it was definitely a more interesting movie watching experience. But I think of all the movies, it's the one I'm the least likely to rewatch. I just can't believe how many ideas David Cronenberg is trying to pack into one movie. I mean, this movie has so much going on and I don't think it all comes together. It takes place in a future, kind of a science fiction future. And the main idea is that the body, the human body, is evolving. It's becoming something new, and it's about people trying to deal with that. But it's got so many different aspects of that. For one thing, almost no one left in the world can feel pain anymore. So cutting, slicing into each other, and surgery has kind of become a fad. And it's like an art show thing where people uh, do surgery on each other, and it's like a big entertainment thing. So you got that going on. Uh, there's also a sexuality aspect to it, of course, as David Cronenberg's movies usually do, where a surgery and cutting into people has, has become the new sex. There's so many ideas. And, and the thing is, like, the main plot is about this kid who gets murdered at the beginning of the movie. And the movie is about what was going on with that kid, what was different about that kid, what are people trying to hide about the body, and they're trying to do a an autopsy on the body and to try to figure out what's going on. And that's your main plot, but the movie has so many other things going on too. Characters, subplots that I just didn't think really went anywhere. So the movie's just very scattered. It's starring Viggo Mortensen, uh, Leah Sadu, and Kristen Stewart, all of which are good in the movie. But um, yeah, it just kind of made me feel like I'd rather watch Videodrome, that uh, I, I need to re watch video drum one of these days next up the vinegar syndrome blu-ray of the cat creeps this is part of vinegar syndrome's vsl line vinegar syndrome labs where they're trying to just release very different kinds of movies the kind of movies they wouldn't normally put out and this is a 1940s b movie very much a fast talking reporter old dark house spooky mystery and i'm ranking this over the last two because i just find that more enjoyable and i enjoyed my time with this movie more i could definitely see myself re-watching this before those other two but it's very much just like a 1940s b movie it's less than an hour it has a um a possessed cat a cat that people think is possessed by a dead woman that's going to try to help them solve the mysteries going on of a missing fortune and all that kind of stuff and uh, I don't know why Vinegar Syndrome felt the need to put this out in this beautiful release. 
with this really nice slip cover. Um, it, it's just a great presentation, but I'm really glad I waited till the it was on sale because I got it for like $17. And that's the most I think it's worth because this is the kind of movie you'd find in like those Scream Factory Universal Horror 4 packs. Um, I don't know if this is Universal or not, but it's just that type of movie. But one thing that stood out to me about the movie is the main guy who plays the fast talking reporter. He is 1940s Ryan Reynolds. He reminds me of Ryan Reynolds so much. It was pretty weird to see. Okay, at number five is My Demon lover this is another screen factory blu-ray and it is a ridiculous ridiculous horror comedy romantic comedy about a girl who plays the girl the young woman michelle little who's just cute as a button in this movie i thought she was adorable but she's a young woman who very much wants to find love but she always finds that the guys she dates turn out to be jerks and she's struggling with that but she meets a guy who's played by scott valentine right yeah scott valentine who you might know as justine bateman's boyfriend in family ties where he very much does like a sylvester stallone type voice Come to find with this movie, that's not his real voice. He doesn't sound like that in this movie. But she meets a guy, he's like this homeless weirdo, and it turns out he is possessed by a demon. And whenever he gets uh, aroused by a woman, he turns into a demon and he turns into like a different form every time. So there's lots of opportunity for crazy practical effects and stuff like that. And I just found the movie delightful. So much fun. I I'm Seriously, guys, it is ridiculous. It is so cheesy. So if you have an allergy to 80s cheese, stay away from this movie. Like, please stay away. You will be miserable. I love 80s cheese. I love all the corniness. I love the rom-com aspect, the goofy practical effects, demon aspect. It was just so much fun, and I enjoyed Scott Valentine and Michelle Little together so much. I thought they were an adorable couple, and it's a great time. So, uh, really liked by Demon Lover. Okay, at number four, uh, a one-two punch. It's the Arrow video Inside the Mind of Coffin Joe box set. I was so excited when they announced this box set. I didn't know much about the movies, but they just have amazing titles. They're like 1960s, 70s, maybe a little bit beyond um, just gothic chillers. And uh, I, I was so excited to dig into this. So I watched the first two movies. At Midnight, I'll Take Your Soul, which is the first movie, which is from 1964 and the sequel that's called This Night I'll Possess Your Corpse from 1967. I mean, what title could possibly be better than At Midnight I'll Take Your Soul? Well, I'll tell you what, This Night I'll Possess Your Corpse. These are insanely good titles. And okay, uh, the one I like less was actually the first one. And it's very weird because this is Brazil's first horror movie. And it's made by a guy named Jose Moica Marens, and he is, he directs the movie, writes the movie, stars in the movie as the main character, Coffin Joe, who is an undertaker, and he's just this spooky guy. The movie opens up with him giving this epic monologue about blood and death, and it's super macabre, and then it cuts to this witch who gives another monologue to the camera about how you should not watch this movie, because if you do, you'll have a horrible time. It's just so scary. All of that is a blast. The movie has so much Halloween atmosphere graves and fog and hands coming out of the dirt just so good but the story itself is very odd it's about coffin joe's desire to have a son a perfect son who will carry forward his bloodline and be perfect and it's about him just killing anyone who possibly gets in the way of having a son with who he perceives to be the perfect woman. So he just kills a lot of people in this and monologues about a lot about having a son. It's low budget, it's rough, but I really like the performance from Jose Morica Marins as uh, Coffin Joe, just a very loud and passionate, so much bravada with his cane and his top hat. Really fun character, but I liked better the sequel, This Night I'll Possess Your Corpse, which is very similar, but is just bigger and better and clearly has more money. It starts right where the last one left off, and it's basically him just continuing his pursuit of trying to find the perfect woman so he can have the perfect son. And you know, one one weak spot about these movies is is Coffin Joe just monologues too much, <laughs> frankly. He monologues about how he will start the perfect race, how God is horrible and like there is no God and and how like he must have the perfect son. He just monologues constantly about all these things and it gets a little tiresome. The movie's just under two hours. It feels it. It's too long. But it's just so crazy. And it's got so much atmosphere. And the murder scenes are even wilder in this movie. Like, much more sick. This is a kind of demented movie. There's even a scene 
where he goes to hell. And one thing I'm really interested in is cinematic interpretations of hell. And this one is a really good one. The black and white movie even turns into color when he goes to hell. And it's really creepy and just imaginative. Really enjoyed this movie a lot. This Night I'll Possess Your Corpse is good stuff. Definitely liked it better than the first one, but I, I do recommend these. But I gotta say, um, one thing I was kind of hoping to get out of Coffin Joe is I was kind of hoping this to be another Paul Nashie experience where I discover these and just I fall in love with them so much like I did with Paul Nashie. Not quite there for me, to be honest with you. I, I don't have the Paul Nashie feels about Coffin Joe, and I don't feel a lot of motivation to binge through the movies, but they're interesting, and I do like them, but I don't know when I'm going to finish that box set, partially because I'm waiting on a replacement disc. One of the discs is missing subtitles, and Arrow is sending me a replacement. Haven't received that yet. Okay, time for the top three. We got some serious heavy hitters here. Dr. Terror's House of Horrors from Vinegar Syndrome. Brand new Vinegar Syndrome 4K release uh, that just came out in March. And uh, this is the first Amicus horror movie, the first Amicus anthology, kind of a rival company to Hammer back in the 60s and 70s. I actually did a dedicated review for this on the channel, so you can check that out. I do enjoy the movie. The first time I saw it years ago, I wasn't a big fan. I thought it was okay. But uh, this time I enjoyed it much, much more, and I really enjoyed making that review. But um, I kind of just want to talk about the Vinegar Syndrome actual release here. It's awesome. It's so good. I just loved it. It was amazing getting to watch one of these classic British horror films from the 1960s in 4K. It looked every bit as good as you'd hope to. It felt like one of the most impressive 4Ks I've ever seen, probably because I love this kind of movie and I've never seen this kind of movie in 4K before, because no Hammer or Amicus movie has been released in 4K before. But I will say, there's one scene where the quality definitely dips. I'm sure the... The um, original negative was probably damaged, and that's probably why they couldn't restore it perfectly. But that's just one, one little part. The rest of it looked perfect. I could not have been more happy with it. A lot of good special features on here. There's one docu making of documentary. It's archival, archival documentary, so Vinegar Syndrome didn't make it. But a lot of good information there. I really enjoyed it. And I just loved... Getting to, uh, love getting to watch this, loved making the review. So if you want to hear more about the movie, definitely check that video out if you haven't yet. At number two, John Frankenheimer's Seconds on Criterion Blu-ray. Uh, I'd want to see this movie for a long time. So glad I finally popped it in. I've had this since like the November Criterion sale. You know, my top two are both the least horror of all of these movies. Um, not technically horror movies, I wouldn't say, but they're the two most disturbing movies I've watched recently, um, probably all year. And John Frankenheimer Seconds is a movie that starts out with this guy who's a very boring 1960s office job, family man. His wife and him are empty nesters. They seem to be growing apart. Seems to be going through a midlife crisis. The whole movie is like one big midlife crisis metaphor. He finds out about this company that will give you a whole new life. And he doesn't even get the chance to really make the decision because they do something pretty horrible to him that enables them to blackmail him. And then he just has to go through with this changing a new life because they basically ruin his life. They would ruin his life if he went back. And he undergoes this dramatic plastic surgery. And when he comes out of the plastic surgery, he's Rock Hudson. Who plays him in the first part? I cannot remember the actor, but yeah, a different actor plays him and then he becomes Rock Hudson and they give him this entirely new life. And the movie is about him trying to deal with this, trying to fit into this new life and then what happens if he can't fit into this new life. And the ending of the movie was so disturbing to me for several reasons. I was like chill to the bone. Um, I have really discovered recently, I love John Frankenheimer. Like, I love this and The Manchurian Candidate. And he even made this B-movie animal attacks film in the 70s called Prophecy. And even when he makes, like, a corny B-movie, even that's, like, fantastic. So, like, he's just a great great director. There's also a special feature on here of Alec Baldwin talking about him in seconds. And that was really good. So uh, Rock Hudson gives an incredible performance. It's a very dark, edgy 1960s film. Like it even has nudity in it. It's really pushing the envelope. And it was very disturbing to me and I loved it. So I highly recommend seconds if you haven't seen it. But um, my number one is the best movie I've watched all year. It is the first movie all year that I've given five stars to on Letterboxd. And that is Paul Schrader's Hardcore from the 1970s, 1979, starring George C. Scott. George C. Scott is this, um, again, kind of like the guy, guy in the beginning of Second. It's kind of a boring father, conservative, religious guy who owns a business and just lives a very normal life in the Midwest. And he sends his daughter off to like a Bible camp kind of thing that's off in California. And she goes missing. And this goes on for months. And he ends up moving to California 
to try to find her. And he discovers that she has become involved in the adult film industry. He hires a private detective played by Peter Boyle. Love to see Peter Boyle in this. He's great. Who discovers this. And George C. Scott goes headfirst diving into the adult film industry and the whole adult industry. I'm just saying adult because I've heard uh, YouTube can penalize you if you say a different word for what it is, but you get it. He just dives headfirst into this world, goes undercover, tries to pretend that he's a film producer. And it feels like a father just diving straight into hell to save his kid. And it is so intense, but it's so entertaining too, because it's fascinating watching him go into this world. Now you might think that this movie is going to be sexy because you know, it's the whole, that's what the industry is supposed to be. Right. But it is not, it's disturbing. It is dark. It goes to much darker places than I ever expected, but the movie is not miserable or dour or depressing. Like it is depressing in some ways, but Paul Schrader finds a way to balance that, to make it disturbing as it should be, but also make it wildly entertaining, partially because of George C. Scott's performance that's so fascinating to watch. This is like the best movie I've seen in a long time. My number one discovery for the year so far, and if it gets replaced, I'll be shocked. This movie's amazing. All right, my friends, that is my watch list for the month of March, 2024. Let me know what you've been watching in the comments down below. I would love to hear about it. And if you haven't subscribed and you love physical media content, I will be doing a very large collection update very soon. So look out for that. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. With all that said, don't forget to enjoy yourself today. Take some time to relax and have some fun and I'll see you next time.